Today I'm going to talk about six items you need to have a successful eBay business and six things you will need to get a successful business and keep a successful eBay business. So it's coming up. Guys, today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and film near my sleeping cat, Oliver. <laughs> you guys see him? This is a little setup I made for him on top of my shelving unit. The rest of the things on the shelving unit are things I've listed. And he needed like a little spot to come and lay down when he's hanging out with me in the office. So I used to have one over by the window, but I needed that space for my inventory. <laughs> so now he's just got the one spot and that's okay. I'm happy to give it up. He's a blessed kitty right now. So I thought you guys could enjoy watching him while I'm filming this video. Okay. If you don't know, I'm Cindy Krause with Krause House Sift and Thrift. I've been an eBay seller for over 20 years. I have lots of knowledge and experience I'd like to share with you guys, hence the YouTube channel. That's what this is all about, giving you useful, helpful information to grow your eBay business or to start your eBay business if you haven't started it yet. So today I wanted to talk about six, six, <laughs> I don't know how to do six, uh, six things that you will need to either start or maintain an eBay business. Well, these are more for like starting a business. So first things I wanted to talk about is equipment. So some of these are obvious, but still need to be said. You'll need a computer or a laptop. Things that you will need to either start or maintain an eBay business. Well, these are more for like starting a business. So first things I wanted to talk about is equipment. So some of these are obvious, but still need to be said. You'll need a computer or a laptop. And I have a desktop computer. That's what I prefer to use. Oh, the other thing you could have is a smartphone. And a lot of people do their listings from their start smartphone. I prefer not to. <laughs> I much rather do listings from my desktop computer. I don't currently have a laptop. I do have another computer downstairs and I also have a tablet but don't really have a keyboard to go with that tablet. So I don't like to do the hunt and peck method and I'm pretty good typist. So I like getting on my desktop computer and just go, go, go and typing out those listings. And you know, the more you do it, the faster you'll get. It's all about practice. Uh, when you're starting out, you want to get on eBay's selling form. It says sell, you click that. I'd much rather do listings from my desktop computer I don't currently have a laptop. I do have another computer downstairs and I also have a tablet, but don't really have a keyboard to go with that tablet. So I don't like to do the hunt and peck method and I'm pretty good typist. So I like getting on my desktop computer and just go, go, go and typing out those listings. And you know, the more you do it, the faster you'll get. It's all about practice. Uh, when you're starting out, you want to get on eBay's selling form. It says sell, you click that. And it's real easy. You just follow the form, basically. <laughs> just click on each field and fill in there for me. And you're gonna to wanna to fill in as many item specifics as you have. eBay is a big stickler for item specifics. Some of them are required, some of them are recommended. 
but you'll see what I mean when you go into the eBay form and the item specifics are color, style, brand, type, size, etc. So it's very easy just to follow that form. I know some people use uh, fancy programs. They have these forms with floral print and all these things. You don't need that. It's extra money. You don't need it. It's not necessary. People will buy just off a basic form. And, you know, people buy from people who sell in their phones. Uh, the mobile app and the desktop app are very different, although it looks like they might be merging as one. eBay is um, trying out a new format for their listing. It's just kind of in beta testing right now, meaning they haven't forced us to use it yet. I don't personally like it. It's more like the mobile. I much prefer the one they have now. Hopefully we could keep it as long as we can. I don't know, but either way you could list on your mobile, your desktop, your laptop, whatever. And even if you're starting out, if you don't have a computer, you can go to the library and use their computer. I've heard of people doing that. And I've heard of people just going to the post office and paying postage to them and then shipping their items. Don't recommend that. It's the more expensive way to go. You're definitely gonna wanna go through eBay shipping or another platform like Pirate Ship. You're gonna get way more discounts for shipping than going to the post office. But you could do that if you're starting out and you don't have a computer or printer. The next thing is a printer. Whether it's a regular printer like I have, I just stick to my regular printer because a lot of times I have other things to print out besides eBay labels and I don't wanna get two printers. But I'll eventually get a Rolo printer, which is the other printer you can get that comes in various brands and sizes. And a lot of people swear by them. Um, you don't need ink. It's just a roll of paper that prints continuous labels, which is nice if you have a lot of items to ship out. I haven't tried one yet. I will try one eventually. I've heard they're great. People swear by them. So if you want to try a roll of printer, you can get one brand new. Um, off of Amazon or used, or you can go to Facebook Marketplace, which is probably what I would do to get a discount. I'm not ready to get one yet, probably when we move when I have more room, because I'm going to want to keep my regular printer in addition to the Rolo printer, because like I said, I print off other things. Some people just have a Rolo printer. I guess they don't print other things. <laughs> um, but the Rolo printer is designed for labels specifically. The next thing is a postage scale. I get the one, I when I first started out, I got one of the real basic ones. People still have those. I'll put pictures of these on the screen, you guys, so you can see what I'm talking about. The one I have now has a separate little screen that tells you the weight and it's attached to a cord. So this way you could weigh big packages and pull out and still see what the weight is. When you got a regular scale, a big package is gonna overshadow the screen that shows you the postage, um, the weight. So that's why I end up getting the kind with, um, it's got like a really stretchable cord, you know, like the old telephones in the days with the little corkscrew cord. Uh, that's what this one's like. And I like that and I would recommend it, but it's whatever you guys decide to do. eBay, Amazon has a plethora uh, postage scales. Just love that word. Don't get to use it enough. All right. And next thing is shipping supplies that comes in many shapes and forms, but you're going to need packing paper, at least packing paper and bubble wrap. Those are the two musts. Um, you could also get those bubble filled, bubble filled. they're Pack. air filled. They're, they're little bubble things filled with air. A look on the screen, you guys. I can't always explain things correctly. <laughs> and peanuts, packing peanuts, which I've used, but they are a pain in the butt. If they spill, they get all over everything. They have like the static cling and they stick to your carpet and your clothes and everything. And, and the people receiving the package probably doesn't like them either, but I have used them. If you ship a lot of breakables, I do recommend you getting peanuts. I do ship some breakables, but that's not my main, the main items that I ship. So, uh, right now I don't have any. Sometimes if I feel like it, I order some, but what I use is bubble wrap and packing paper mostly. You're also going to want to get packing tape or packaging tape. I've got like three different kinds. I've got the clear, I've got eBay. Um, if you have a basic store and above through eBay, they give you a $25 shipping coupon. 
uh, for free, you know, uh, on them that you could get supplies. And that's every quarter. And I use mine every single time. And they, you know, refer you to eBay shipping supplies. And yeah, they are spendy. You could spend your whole 25 but at one time and then sometimes pay over. But I end up getting, I think it's 10 rolls of eBay tape. And that's really great. I use that constantly for all my packages. Even the ones going to Mercari and uh, Facebook Marketplace or Poshmark, I still use the eBay tape, who cares? And the nice thing about it is it does cover up things. Like if you have a package you're reusing from Amazon or something somewhere else, it does cover up old labels, but it doesn't cover them up perfectly they are kind of opaque they're see-through so you can see through i also recommend you get some kind of other packaging tape that's like a tan color or another color like red or brown or black whatever because i find that that really covers well old labels or if you get boxes moving boxes from somebody and they've written on them with uh you know uh ink pens and you want to cover that up so i really like the brown packaging tape also i've discovered these boxes that the ebay that they do not like the ebay tape or the regular clear packaging tape they um something about the surface of the box you know makes the tape um unstick so it starts coming off so i i didn't have the regular brown or craft packaging tape that i recommend you guys get so I had to use duct tape because it kept coming off and I'm like, I can't send this package with tape that's coming off. Um, doesn't look very pretty, but it did work. So that's why I recommend you get something else. There is some packaging tape that's really thick. It's like craft tape and it's very, it's really great. It closes the packages up very nice and it sticks. So look into that, you guys. Um, well, I forgot one thing, duh, boxes. <laughs> Those are an absolute must when you're shipping on eBay, unless everything, oh, you guys see that? My cat just, hi buddy. Um, unless um, you're shipping only clothing, then you shouldn't need boxes. But I would get them anyway, just in case you're shipping something that needs a box. So absolutely important, get boxes. You can get free ones from USPS on their website or whenever you go to a post office, they always have free boxes. You can also grab their free envelopes. Uh, but I order periodically from USPS.com. Their boxes, their padded envelopes, their regular envelopes. You're going to need boxes for sure. And the other thing I use is I get these bags from wherever, uh, Ross or some other store. They're just regular grocery bags. Um, the big grocery bags and that's what i use to put my packages in to take to the post office fedex or ups store you have to have something i mean you can't just put them all in your arms you need some kind of bag you can use anything use paper bags wouldn't recommend that those rip easily plastic bags whatever you have around the house you can even use those big garbage bags if you want um i like using different bags i don't know if you guys could see them up there i'll step away but that's my basket full of bags. And that's what I use when I go to the post office or my husband goes to the post office for me. He's a sweetie to do that for me. So uh, yeah, those are the six things. Well, a bunch of things, but one of them was shipping supplies and it was kind of all encompassing. So the other one is you're gonna need to follow some guidelines to be successful on eBay, which means you're gonna have to gain the knowledge of these things. So, and uh, some of these might be very obvious, but I'm still gonna just put them out there in case you guys don't really know about them. All right, sourcing. Whether that means grabbing things around your house or going to a thrift store, yard sale, estate sale, um, retail arbitrage, Ross, grocery store, Target, wherever, um, you are gonna need items to sell on eBay, no doubt. But yeah, you are. So uh, yeah, you're definitely gonna, need to go sourcing once you have enough items 10 to 20 items get those listed then go get more um right now i'm yeah i'm overflowing with my death slash money slash profit piles because i have too many clothes 
and John and I have been going to thrift stores and buying just other things. And so that's what I've been listing. I've got to do the clothes today. So yeah, sourcing is a biggie. Make sure you get the things people want. And what goes hand in hand with that is comping. That means you're going to look on eBay's app and you're looking at the comparables. You find something in a thrift store, you, you have something at home, gee, I wonder if this is gonna sell. Type it in eBay, whether you have the UPC code or whether you're just putting a description of the item, uh, the you know, be as specific as possible, the brand name, the color, you know, exactly what it is. And then if those pop up, you'll know. Uh, this is how many people that are selling this item. It could be zero, it could be hundreds. Um, and then you're gonna click on sold because you wanna see what's sold. It's important to see how many are listed, but it's more important to see what's sold, how much it's sold for. And I also wanna recommend that you click the um, highest. So you find out what was the highest price that that item sold for. So it gives you an idea. I kind of shoot, you know, if there's a, a big difference, like something sold very high and then there's a low, I kind of go in between. It depends. And you'll learn that as you go. You'll just get more and more adept at figuring out where to price something in. And that's the thing I wanted to talk to you about. Sourcing, comping, and pricing, they all go hand in hand. They're all, they're all important, equally important. So you wanna sell the items people want, and you know that by comping them out on eBay and then you, that will determine your pricing. All right, shipping, you wanna get good at shipping. You can use, uh, well, you want to use eBay shipping app for that very easy. When something sells, you click on the link, takes you to the shipping page, fill in the information. Now, when I price my items for shipping, I become pretty good at what I want to price my items at for the shipping. Most of my items are calculated shipping. So you're gonna to have to decide whether you wanna do calculator or flat rate or free shipping. I don't do free shipping unless the item is $100 or more or if it's very lightweight like a ring or earrings. Um, sometimes you will comp something out and everybody sold the item was free shipping. Sometimes I'll go with the free shipping, but a lot of times what I do is I price mine like $10 lower and then I add the shipping on top of that. So you definitely want to be competitive when you're listing something that a lot of people have listed. So yeah, shipping's important. What I do, um, everything is calculated except for t-shirts, tops, caps, hats, or lightweight items, all of those are flat rate. So I'll put in five to six dollars depending on the item. You know, I weigh it and then I've kind of got an idea, okay, how much should this item be priced at? And then I add a dollar into that. eBay has a dollar automatically added to an item that sells, which is my shipping and handling fee, and that pays for my supplies. So storage, you're gonna have to have storage whether it's in your office like I have, whether it's in your garage, a shed, or another storage unit away from your home somewhere, you have to have storage. Uh, that's so, so important. Um, you can't be listing a bunch of things on eBay and then like, oh, well, I have nowhere to put them. No, <laughs> before you start selling on eBay, you're scouting out where are you gonna put the items? Some people have them spread all over their house in different rooms. I don't like to do that. Mine's in one place in my office. Fortunately, I have a big enough office to house my over a thousand items that I have listed. Uh, it's getting kind of bursting at the seams, but I'll be okay. We're gonna be moving in a few months. So uh, I'm gonna be okay. A lot of the items I sell are either clothing or smaller items. I have sold bigger items, but I'm trying to get away from that now because yeah, storage is at a premium, so you gotta think about that. Um, when we used to live in Portland, I had, uh, well, we had two storage units, one for most of our items, because we were an Airbnb, and then the other one was just my eBay items, and I had to drive there every day, sometimes multiple times a day, and it was about eight to nine miles, so. But I was working at the time, so I just, after work, I just swing by, because it was on my way home. And you know, it wasn't ideal, but hey, it housed my eBay stuff. And then now that we're moving, that's gonna be the bulk of what we move my eBay inventory. That's the bad thing. 
is when you have a lot of inventory and you move, it's got to go with you. But that's my job and that's the way it goes. All right. Um, tweak your listings. I've talked about this before. So that means once you've listed a bunch of items and let's say they're sitting there for a few months, um, if it's not selling, you want your items ideally to sell within three to six months. If they're not, it could be maybe the right buyer's not out there yet, or something's wrong with your price, your title, your description. So go back and look at that listing and determine, huh, can I lower the price? Can I raise the price? Sometimes that's best to raise the price, believe it or not, because there are people out there that have mentality of, why is that item so cheap? It must be something wrong with it. There are people that are wealthy who have money um, or just, you know, have saved their money and don't mind spending it. And they have that mentality of, well, this item must not be worth much if it's sell they're selling it so cheap. So it's all about learning, learning your market, learning your niche, learning your customer, looking at other comps, other people selling that same item, what do they have it listed at? And then also if items been sitting for a few months, you go again and search on eBay and say, hey, uh, this used to be worth this, but now it's worth this. So you raise it or lower your price, change your title, your listing, whatever. If it looks great to you and you just want it to sit, that's fine, you could do that. But you know, there's been talk about if you tweak your listing, it's good for eBay's algorithm. I don't really know, but I still think it's a good idea. I have thousands, I have over a thousand listings now. Honestly, I don't go and tweak all of them, but I try to every day set aside some time to at least look at five of them and change something about them. So, and then a lot of times if I've had things sitting for years, it goes to the local thrift store. I'm just tired of selling it. Maybe I'll never sell, maybe it will, but I'm getting it out of here. So that's another thing. If you're bursting at the seams like I am and got too much inventory, donate it, get it out, get the clutter out of your life. All right, the most important thing that I've saved for last is consistency. Must be consistent with listings, so, so important. If you list every day, and let's say you go on vacation or you stop, you get sick, whatever, you might sell some things in the first few days. It has happened to me, I've gone on vacation, I've sold things. But if it's been like a week, uh, you're gonna notice a big slowdown. You need to be listing every day, at least list one item, at least. But the more you list, the more you're gonna sell. I shoot for 10 items a day, every day. Don't always get there. I think I was at seven yesterday. It depends on my day, how busy I am, how organized I am. I do YouTube videos, so that cuts into a lot of it. But I only been putting out like once a week videos because it's tough, it takes up my whole day and that means eBay is getting neglected. I might list five things on a day that I put out a video. But you guys, the more you list, the more you'll sell. And uh, you're gonna want at least 100 items in your store as soon as possible uh, to make at least two sales a day. That's generally the rule, of course, there's always exceptions. So, hope this helps you guys. This, these are my golden tips for today from an experienced eBayer. And um, hope you're having an awesome day. It's been super cold here in Idaho. Oh, it's April. I'm such a summer girl and it's been hard on me. We're getting snow. We have snow out there. We're getting snow a couple more days this week. Our next nice day is Sunday. It is Tuesday now. All right, I gotta keep telling myself summer's coming, summer's coming. I can do this, I can do this. <laughs> All right, hope you have sunshine where you're at. You guys, I really, really want you to succeed in this business, so I hope you're doing so well with eBay, and if I could help you just a little, I'm happy about that. All right, God bless you guys, take care, I'll see you next time, bye. <laughs>